Okay. All right. Thanks. Now I told you. What you do. <laughs> personal cameraman doing it. <laughs> <laughs> Only the best for this reality show. Okay. So, Kelly is first putting on these stickers that we use to acquire the EKG. As we mentioned, it's essential um, that we use the information from the ECG to time events of the cardiac cycle as we're acquiring uh, echo pictures. I'm going to get a pointer to show you things on the screen. So you'll soon see down below, here comes our EKG, ECG. What's this wave here? Q. Q. Right with the green. P. P wave. That one? QRS. And QRS. Yeah. So we have P wave, QRS, P wave. Okay? And soon, we'll have a picture on the screen. So why don't we get a periscope long axis view? Perfect. Cool. <laughs> All right, so we see that Kelly put the transducer in a certain position. By no means should you know those different positions. Nice ring, Kelly. <laughs> <laughs> and the transducer is transmitting and receiving information here from the chest wall. Okay, Here's the most anterior structure, the right ventricle. One can look at the muscle uh, there, and it's much thinner. Then here, the ventricular septum, or the posterior wall of the left ventricle, okay? We see the motion of the heart through the cardiac cycle, in that we see systole, diastole, systole, diastole, okay? Here, we see the shape of the right ventricle is quite different than that of the left, and we'll show you that in some other views. So we have the right ventricular free wall, as it's called, or anteriorly, the right ventricle itself, the intraventricular septum, the posterior wall of the, uh, of the left ventricle. We see the mitral valve opening and closing. What is this right here? Papillary muscle connecting to the chordae tendinii that connect to the mitral valve. We then uh, see the aortic valve opening and closing and meeting in the center of the aorta that flows out of the heart. And so from this, we can get a quite good anatomic picture of the heart. We can begin to appreciate, and this is something that we do every day, whether the heart is contracting normally, and if there's any particular areas of, specifically the left ventricle, that don't contract normally. Now, by contracting normally, um, we, and this, this is a study I think even done at Stanford, that if we had you guys look at about 30 of these over the course of a couple of weeks, you guys could estimate quite well what the ejection fraction is just by eyeballing a bunch of echo pictures. So it's not that hard. But when we talk about contracting normally, we don't just want to look at the walls move towards each other. If you look at this in systole versus diastole, you'll see that the Interventricular septum, as an example, is thinner when the heart fills, and then as there's contraction, it thickens. You see how it gets thicker? It goes from thin to thick. That's not an <coughs> artifact of the motion of the heart. The wall is thickening as the uh, chamber is decreasing in its volume. Okay, so why don't we get a um, four-chamber view, Kelly? Four. So we'll just take a picture from a different position. And as we talked about, we acquire this two-dimensional information, and we have to put it together in our head to be able to look at all the different regions of the heart and all the different chambers of the heart. So here, we're obtaining information now at the apex. Everyone can feel what's called the point of maximal impulse of, on their chest wall. That's where we're obtaining this. That's right at the apex of the left ventricle. Depending upon the institution that you're at, I would say over 90% of institutions in an adult echo lab acquire this information in this arrangement. We can, at the press of the buttons, flip this around, but I'm just mentioning it because, as is shown there, um, 
but typically an adult echo lab would show the left ventricle on the right, the right ventricle on the left, and the chambers down below compared to the uh, left the ventricular chambers up above. Pediatric labs flip it around. The Mayo Clinic, because they like being the Mayo Clinic, flips it around like a pediatric lab. But most echo labs show it this way, and so it, it's not completely intuitive, but you can see the thicker wall doesn't really matter if we show this to you. You should be ultimately able to identify in a normal heart that the left ventricle is a different shape. It's more of a U shape than the right ventricle that's more triangular. It's a thicker wall ventricle. Here's the lateral wall of the uh, left ventricle, the septum, and again, the right ventricle. We see the mitral valve here opening and closing quite nicely, that papillary muscle again, the tricuspid valve. Can you angle and show us the aortic valve? Sir? <coughs> and so this is what we call a five-chamber view, where now we can picture, why don't you put on Doppler, color Doppler? We'll see blood flowing from the uh, left atria, just move the sector over a bit more to the right. There we go from the left atria into the left ventricle. It's color-coded so that if it's moving towards the transducer at the apex, it's orange. If it's moving away, it's blue. If it's a high velocity, it can get to be a, sort of a turquoise view. But we can, if we time it right, look at blood flowing from the left atria into the left ventricle and then out the aortic valve. Okay. Why don't we get a short axis view to look at the So just by, again, changing the transducer, we can um, get a different view. And here we'll look at, this is now a what we can think of as a bread loaf slice of the left ventricle with the mitral valve in the center. We're going to angle up and show you what, here's the papillary muscle, other papillary muscle, parts of the mitral valve apparatus. Let's look at the uh, aortic valve. Okay, and here's the aortic valve where we can see that our subject has three normal leaflets opening and closing, meeting right in the center there. Okay, so right there. Why don't you just freeze it? Just scroll back. So we can see those valve leaflets opening. Quite a large area for the blood to get out, and then move back the other way, and they close and meet right in the center. Okay? So, our first subject is worn out as welcome. <laughs> so let's thank him for praying for his time. And next in line, we have Evan Davidson. Evan, are you here? All right. Head on down.